Hello and welcome to The Wrap. This is a show running up all things Zwift from the last week. We talk racing, we talk events, we talk tech, we talk fashion. We're live on Twitch, YouTube, X, and we're also Twitch, YouTube, X, Facebook. We're live on Facebook as well. We're going to be, uh, today is episode number 90 on this Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. Well, it's actually 11th now as we're starting after midnight, my time. I think we're, this is the first time we're actually in the same uh, day, I think, at the start yeah. of the show as I'm in the US of A and uh, Anna is in New Zealand. Today on The Wrap, we're going to be talking about the Perry roubaix Femmes Avag Zwift and uh, how it is related to Zwift racing, as well as how awesome the racing was with Perry roubaix Talking about kids' accounts and some stuff that's popped up on the forums, as well as some Facebook posts, wondering what's going on with kids' accounts over at Zwift. The spring training program that's been announced, as well as the Women's Racing Series. Uh, there's also the upcoming Super Tri E World Championships powered by Zwift on April 13th. April 13th, and that's going to be an interesting one. Usually, an extremely successful um, event, actually, in the triathlon world. We've also got a jersey pick of the week. Well, jersey and garage pick of the week from the big spin. It is the French uh, countryside, the beret. And I don't even know how to say that other one. What is that? Tour Tournesol? Tournesol. That's the Tour of the Sun or something along those lines. I mean, Soul of the Sun Tour. I don't know. Maybe. I, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, <laughs> well, uh, that's the the jersey pick of the week. We'd love to know what you think of the jersey and the hat rated 1 to 10. Let us know in the chat. Also, this is a podcast. If you didn't know, the audio version is downloadable anywhere that you do download your podcast. Search the rap. And Zwift should find it real quickly. You can also head on over to ZwiftCommunityLive.com slash podcast and find all of the episodes there. We do upload pretty quickly after we are live. You can also find the place, the forums on ZwiftCommunityLive.com for submission of any kind of fashion or NPC stories. If you do want to submit those for the show, as usually, as usual, Let's get right into it, though. What have we been up to for the last week, Zwift-related or training-related? I'm going to throw it over to Anna for that. Okay. Firstly, the tonicel means the sunflower, so we can uh, go into close. that when we look at the jersey. I was close. It was pretty close. I had to Google that one, actually. That wasn't from my recollection of French words. Um, but what have I been doing? Uh Well, in the total near term was the playoffs for ZRL yesterday uh which was actually a ton of fun i was kind of i was really sort of like putting it out to the team like if we don't want to do it let's just not do it like we don't have to get there da, 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 da. um because a lot of people have gone outside but the team was pretty stoked there are only four of us um unfortunately so we're kind of we're never gonna win um but i've put there in the notes and we might talk about it a bit when we go into the um perry roubaix femme but what I found, I've watched like all of the women's classics races this season, um, even the kind of random ones that happen on like a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. And there've been some like amazing tactics. And I found the tactics in the classics races for the women, I think are quite emulatable. That's probably not a word, but in some of these Zwift races, like I looked at what was happening and I was like, we could, you could pull that off in a Zwift race. Like that would work. I get that. Um, so I, I'll delve into that a little bit when we talk about Perry Roubaix and some of the other classics. Um, got TTT that I've been doing. We had the World Cup last week um, where we like came third by like 17 seconds or something. It was really close. Uh, and then, yeah, I can't even, I went out for a road ride actually. Not gravel, not Zwift, but out on the road on a road bike riding around with a friend um so we rode around you for a couple of hours on and your then... own road bike on my own road bike okay yeah. just checking if there Check was a out. new bike involved here or not like <laughs> there if... wasn't there wasn't i have been trialing and i'll talk about my journey with this is uh the wahoo kicker shift bike i've been trialing that so i guess there's a, a there's a new bike in the house but whether it stays on the house is a, a different story <laughs> 
Well, what I've been up to, I've been jumping into random races to keep fitness. I actually raced the Kiss 100 over the weekend, and I surprised myself. I like I've thought for sure there'd be no fitness in my body, but the hashtag at the end of my stream from Gabby actually was big spin fitness. And I guess doing 30 minute all out efforts like over and over again, almost daily kind of keeps you in okay shape. <laughs> like, I mean, essentially I was just doing threshold efforts in the big spin over and over and over again, or SST like multiple times a day, you know? So I guess like, you know, there, it was almost like I was peaking, you know, like, well, back off the hours and bring this intensity up and, and then, uh, jumped into, uh, it wasn't exactly a really, really difficult race though. We, um, we hit, what was the course? It was the big, something like foothills. I think it was foothills. On uh, yeah. You know, we hit or, or something, whatever. It was, it was a lot of the major climbs outside of uh, the Watopia Mountain. And we ended up finishing on the Volcano KOM, actually. We hit it twice. Um, and I only I won the race from a tactical move point of view, though. And they didn't make the race hard enough. If they would, I was on my limit multiple times where if they would have just made the race harder, but they just didn't. Like, we were doing kind of like, the way I went into these climbs was thinking, okay, it's just like TTT. We do five to six all the way to the top. And if you just hold on to five, and they just kind of did that. Like it was like a group ride almost. Like it was a hard oh. Saturday morning chain gang group ride kind of a thing. You know, nobody was really attacking at orange numbers or anything like that. There was no craziness. And so essentially, like if you give me three minutes vote VO two, that's my wheelhouse. Like it's mountain bike wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Like, if, mm. and so they kind of like, it was almost like a perfect setup. There's this one section on the volcano KOM, that one flat section in the middle of it. When yeah. you go through the middle of the volcano, through the volcano. Yeah. yeah. And essentially it was like, Somebody kind of put a dig into there a little bit. And then another rider pulled me up to the, the two who were off the front. It was Christopher Dawson and Jatel Farup, I believe it was. And then um, another Viking rider, Stolzmo, he pulled me to the other two at like 46, 48 kilometers per hour. And I was like, on the other side of this is just the start of a climb. And I've got all this speed. And they all went to like three watts per kilogram. And I was like, oh. I'm just going to roll through this and see what happens. Cause this is my opportunity. So seven watts per kilogram for a minute and then continue on at threshold. And that was it. It was just over like, cause I immediately got like five seconds because of that free lead out. Cause I just kept the speed while they slowed down. I mean, that was, that was kind of like all she wrote. There wasn't really, but I mean, if they, I think also a couple of them didn't respond like in a way that was like somebody else chased that. I'm not chasing that. You chased that. You know, it's that end of the race oh, see, situation. I, I attacked like five times in our ZRL race and the pack behind was so motivated. It was like, you never got more than like 10 seconds. And then they're pulling like five watts of KG on the front to try and reel you back in. So yeah, it really depends on what and i saw you, your commentary with dave um for the zrl america's east and i know the numbers are a little bit down for the men and women just with people going outside but it does make it really tactical because when you've got a group behind which is just your team and another team well the other team's going to work but if you've got a third team a fourth team a fifth team that's when yeah people will look and be like well i don't i'm not going to pull that well i'm not going to pull that and so they don't pull, but yeah, it was really hard to like run tactics on there, but yeah, super, um, should I go into like the classic stuff or do you have more that you were going through other than your, um, your kiss? You know, I mean, mainly just the kiss 100 and then jumping into some Z racing. I really, actually, I want to talk a little bit about the Z racing course. Uh, it didn't have it in the show notes actually, but they just released that Glasgow crit reverse as event only. And mm. maybe it's not event. Yeah, I think it is event only right now, but you can just like go out on the Glasgow course and turn around so you can yeah, yeah. do it. But um, 
I really, really enjoy that course, actually. Uh, it's Because it we talked really- about it last week, right? So what happened when you did the kind of kick the rollers into the, the KOM? Like, tell me what happened. Yeah, so, well, when we watched it uh, for commentary on Monday, um, it was kind of just nonstop speed like essentially just Mm. and because the groups are so large in the z racing on monday nobody could really get away so it was just non-stop attacks with enough speed and roll through a lot of sections that people were able to hang on if they were you know at that upper echelon of whatever that category is you ended up with a group and a very tactical sprint in the end because it's a 180 degree turn essentially into a sprint uphill Mm, championship champion sprint so the sprints were very tactical very interesting especially with steering on um in my race it was a little bit different because there was a lot less riders i think we had like eight a's show up and so Maybe it was a little more than that. Maybe somewhere like 8 to 15, something like that. And so the opportunity for a breakaway was a lot more open because there wasn't so many, as many people to, to chase things down. Um, it was really about reserving the power-ups and using them at the later section of that KOM. There was an initial punch up the reverse uh, Clyde kicker. You know, because they got that wall, the Kaminsky wall, maybe you'd call it now at this point, that, you know, the way that he did his attack on the other, uh, going down it. But going up it, people would attempt something, but there's enough, you know, downhill and rollers that you can kind of hang on. I found that it was a feather power up very early with how long it lasts. Now, actually, on the downhill into the final bump, carry a ton Mm. of speed through there, and we were immediately able to get gaps. And then if you got a – it was feather and arrow. So if you got an arrow over the top of Clyde Kicker, then you hit your arrow on the downhill, and it's – I mean, we're doing 62 kilometers per hour. Yeah, you're gone. So we ended up with a couple of breaks. It got brought back two or three times, and then finally myself and – Jaden Yager, actually, who's a Masters National Champion TT. The guy weighs like 80 kilograms. On the downhill, yeah. I felt like he was doing seven watts per kilogram when he was doing five. <laughs> like, I'm wow. like just trying to hang on barely. He could have broke me. He was on a TT bike with a 56 teeth, um, just like in training mode. So he just goes to the front and just hammers. And um, I was able to out sprint him, I think, only because he was on a TT bike, though. Like in real life, he was what? on a TT bike. Yeah, oh, not in game. Yeah, not I was in like, game. Not in game. what? No. Oh my god! Like in real life, he's training specifically for his TTs, you uh, know, in okay. Zwift, doing multiple events back to back. So, um, really cool course. It's actually one of my favorites now. Um, as far as like, you know, it's something new. You know what I mean? So you yeah. kind of like you get attracted to that something new, and there's new tactics can play out. I mean. You know, so many of these courses so well after racing them so many times, it's kind of nice to get something fresh that's uh, yeah. got different timings on it, you know, really, and, and trying new things out. It's like when they did Crit City reverse. It's the same kind of thing. Like, you know the roads, but then when you do it reverse, it's so different. Um, oh, I'll be excited to try that one, actually, because I feel like I really – it's, that course is really funny for me because I look at it and I go, oh, I don't want to do it, which I think it's actually the third playoffs race. Is it is. It is it's so, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, it's Glasgow Crit. Glasgow Crit, both directions, points race. So they're doing one race and then a second race. Five what, laps. for playoffs? Yeah, for playoffs as points races. So it's 10 laps total of Glasgow Crit course, but one in one direction and one in the other direction. Oh my god! Is that public knowledge? I did not know. Go that. look at the website. I actually had to look it up. Actually, I believe it's public knowledge. I hope it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's public knowledge. Uh, Sorry, look at yeah, I, race three and race four, but race three and four are on the same day. Glasgow <gasps> Crit Circuit five laps. Glasgow Crit Circuit Reverse is the second race, also five laps. But oh my gosh! Now. Interesting. FAL and FTS segments are listed one time on race three, but not on the second. There's power ups on race three. Um, maybe this might just be a, you know, a, a I don't know, maybe a issue when it comes to what's listed here and just a mistake, an editor's mistake. But maybe I don't know. Like, is the second one not? No, it says points race though. So I, would I reckon think, it's an editor. Oh, yeah, I think, I think it's it will be edited mistake. Out. When did yeah, this yeah. happen? How have I missed this? Like it was always just five laps, regular way round, and now they're adding the reverse. Are you seeing okay, this, right? You're excited. seeing this, right? I'm the seeing it. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, just making sure. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, yeah, I kind of have a funny relationship with this course because I look at it and I'm, I'm always like, ah, oh, boring. But then when I, every time I do it, it's exciting and like kind of fun. So, ah, oh, that's really like jazzed me up because I, I was really low motivation for playoffs. Um, but yeah, the race yesterday was awesome. So that's going to be really, really cool. Actually, I'm I want to talk. I want to. I want to get into a little bit of your head about what was going on there, especially off the front with Rathwell and Penner. And, and, okay, and, let's go into it. Yeah, yeah. because I want to. Like, we did all our commentary on it, you know, and like we t- we spent a good amount of time on the broadcast with it because it was there's some pretty good action going on there, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. I've, like I said, I've been watching the classics, um, the women's races and there was a race. Oh, I want to say it was like Brut de Pena or Omloop or something. It was one of the midweek ones, not a huge, it wasn't Perry Roubaix. It wasn't Flanders, but, um, there was a situation where two riders. So there was a Trek rider behind Elisa Longo Borghini and she was with, um, lot of Kapeki. So they were two behind, like they were in the chase, just two of them, or there might've been a third sort of random person. But then up the road was Sharon Van Enroy and I want to say Mariana Voss. And what I found super interesting, and at the time I'm like, what are you doing, Elisa? So the two were up the front and then Elisa started to attack and try and like get up, but not bridge, like just increase her pace. And I was like, why are you pulling lot of Kapeki up. But then when you watched what happened, I was like, that is really smart. So while she was trying to push up and get up and not bridge, just trying to get up to the front, obviously on the radio, the person is telling who I think was Mariana Voss, Elisa's trying to catch up. Elisa's trying to catch up. So Mariana got off of Sharon Van Enroy's wheel, who's, uh, who is uh, Longo Burgundy's teammate and started drilling it off the front tiring herself out so she started tiring herself out and I was like that is really smart because there's that kind of golden rule of like don't chase down a teammate but actually that created some behaviors that were really good so I was like in this race let's just throw Ah, all these tactics I want to do so (laughs) so Voss is on the front drilling it because someone's chasing that's a teammate don't let her catch so yeah so it's a tactic that has nothing to do with who's it's not mariana Voss paying any attention who she's with she's paying attention to the radio going i know what's coming yeah and so she ends up burning matches while the other teammate sits in and when you first look you're like why is a teammate chasing a teammate but then so we did this so we first off started with the good old attack counter attack so i attacked first this was straight off the bat and then m i'm like on the radio being like who's gonna counter me who's gonna counter me m you counter and then m counters over the top and then we chase her. I was like, who's next? Who's next? I'm like, Megan, you're up. You do it. And she's like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, no, just do it. Just do it. As soon as we get on, just attack. She attacked. Lieberman got on her wheel and they broke free. And I'd say the only mistake we made is when Penna went, no, none of us got on her. I should have got on her quicker and then dragged up um, or neutralized the move. But then what happened was Megan's up the front, but she's only like, 15 seconds up the road. So I was drilling it on the front to keep the gap at 15 seconds. So I was like, we're going to do 15 seconds and M when we hit that log drag, you're going to attack and try and bridge. And what happened is exactly what happened in that classics race. M attacks and is trying to bridge. She doesn't get there, but it caused the reason she didn't is Rachel Lieberman jumped on the front and had to ride at like five to six Watts a kg. And Megan just mm. sat on her wheel being like, cool, thank you. So even though you don't bridge up, you tire out the rider who's trying to stay away. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, so I think watching some of these women's classics, I'm not, I mean, the men's classics, to be fair, have been like Matthew Vanderpoel doing 60 kilometer raids off the front. So it's not super tactical, but in the women's ones, well, some of these I don't tactics. I know about that. No. The, the setup to get him there. Oh, was absolutely, phenomenal. yeah. So, like, if you watch okay, the yeah, early but I mean, part of the race, but then like when he went, I was like, okay, I guess he's going at this point. But I mean, 
You got to give them their, their oh, kudos yeah, 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 for yeah. how they set him up to be there. Because he definitely had teammates working until that oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. To get so it's kind of not the – yeah, it's not the point I'm making. I guess the point I'm making is in the last – from what I've seen, in the last 20, 20 to 30K of a classics race are tactics that you can transfer to Zwift. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So that's what I was saying with Matthew Vanderpoel, like, sure on zwift although i've never seen it because the races aren't long enough well gabby for you to drill pulled your that hole. gabby pulled the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the matthew van yeah. pole uh this yeah. week in the uh zwift racing but, league I um think. <laughs> you kind of get what i mean like kind of that i don't know what it is about the classics but that last part i think you can do in game like so will loudon i got a shout out to will sorry i know i'm totally derailing you a little bit right here but like <laughs> there were two riders who did the like i'm just gonna go and see and they mm. made it work they made it work yeah. um you know will loudon and that i know of that we watched and actually there might have been a few others we'd love to hear about them actually if you do have any stories about breakaway situations or your zrl in general but go ahead uh sorry for interrupting you just wanted to clarify no, that's that good. There i just were similar yeah, yeah situations also to the men. yeah and I think the course, like that course, Rolling Highlands, where there's a bit of punch, the fact it was a scratch race, the fact it was around 40 kilometers, so it's relatively long, it's not like a 20k race, is you can do some of these things. And the other thing I've, like, I was thinking about is looking ahead to ZRLs, if they're going to keep going with some of these scratch races, you do really need to divide your team, like, like they do in a, in a classics team, like, if you looked at Perry Roubaix, which was amazing, you had um, Lotta Kopecky, the classics rider and the protected rider, with the world's best sprinter in the chase pack. So Kopecky didn't have to do any work. And that's kind of like what you could do in Zwift, right? You could just get a teammate who's a really good ruler to get ahead, get in a front pack, and then have your best sprinter sitting behind who doesn't have to sit on the front because they're like, well, my teammate's up the road. And then the teammate up the road doesn't have to sit on the front because they're like, oh, well, my sprint is at the back for the finish. And so you're in this position like what the women's Perry roubaix was where Kapeki could just sit on wheels and Weebus could just sit on wheels. And then chances are one of them's going to win. We've seen that a lot in the Rolling Highlands, actually. Across mm. a ton of the racing, we saw so many breakaway attempts on Rolling Highlands, honestly. I was really really interesting to see how they got chased back to see how um the ways in which like you just said big sprinters would sit in and just be patient whereas there'd be a few off the front one of the shout outs i really got to give to when it comes to um similar to lotto in some ways though because there were moments that lotto Kapeki just took over the race and mm -hmm. drilled the pace at the front to yeah. soften the legs and people had to work to come back as a group to yeah. you know chase back and be a, again a part of the front group again a part of the front group until finally she just broke you know well a few of them just broke everybody else and it ended up in you know in a sprint in the end you know reduced i mean say reduced field in the breakaway um now similar team sz this past week i think they out of all the teams in the zrl that i noticed were kind of the show up team. They really showed up mm. seriously for the Zwift racing league. And, um, there was a breakaway in our second EMEA men's race, open race. I believe it was where Bjorkland and Johan Norin went off the front together, team SZ, and were working together for like a lap off the front. Mm. They got chased back by the pack. Norin sat in for like another lap until the final corkscrew and with like a K to go, just went bonkers off the front. And he somehow, I've almost never seen this before on Rolling Highlands. The, if you go from right there, I don't know if I've ever seen someone hold off the pack in a yeah. full off gallop. And somehow this guy did it. He went wow. like six watts per kilogram all the way to the bottom of the breakaway Bray. And then went nine and ended up with a bike length at the finish line against the whole pack. It was actually pretty, wow. pretty amazing, uh, which isn't exactly like any of the classics that we've seen. We haven't seen that happen at all. As far as that last second 
um, you know, being with an entire pack chasing them down. That would be amazing. I don't know if that'd be amazing though. Sometimes I've thought about that on that Villodrome. Like, like it's a hard enough race, Perry Rubey, that you don't end up with a whole lot of riders at the same time on that Velodrome. Now I've, I haven't watched maybe enough Perry Rubey to know the history that like, has there ever been where the pack is coming in and they've got another lap to go. And there's this huge pack that ends up swallowing up the winner. You know what I mean? That ends up being, yeah, I, I'm not saying that. that either. And I think, I mean, again, like I've watched the last three women's ones and the men's like, I always just see it as, I guess because the roads are so narrow that it's been so selective up to that point that it seems like there's like, but it the kind of leads. It could, it could happen. happen. It would be, and yeah, so like, it would be wild. It would be so wild. Like, and then would, would, would teams help someone then? Be, like, you know what I mean? Like how quickly could the split decisions happen too? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I mean, last year was kind of crazy with Vanderpool coming in. And then just as he was coming out for his second lap, Jesper Philipson came in with Walt Van Aert on his wheel. And so they were kind of like almost riding a wasn't, bit yeah, weirdly wasn't there together. there something that happened there? I thought some little bit of... No, nah, Jesper just sprinted, out sprinted Wout. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it kind of got me excited watching, yeah, some of the coverage you had of the USA East and how those scratch races play out. And I think the like magic source here is like a course that's rolling with some interesting terrain. I'd also say like the Yorkshire courses would be similar, like something that just adds like a, just some terrain where there's a lot of places you could do stuff. Um, Multi-lap as well. So you do like two or three laps of that same sort of course. So you get like a feel for like, oh, I'll trial this here. Okay, that worked. I'll do that again. Um, and then around that 40 kilometer mark, I think some of the races that we've had in WTRL where it's like 20K, it just ends up being like this insane 20 kilometer smash fest, right? So yeah, it's a little magic source there. I think that Rolling Highlands, which I was a bit sort of um, disappointed with, to be honest, I was like, oh, Rolling Highlands, that's more of a TTT course. But actually when I started riding, I was like, oh no, this is fun. Like you can do some stuff here. It was great. Yeah, it's got long enough false false kind of flats plus that corkscrew and breakaway bray that you can you can get away with a few things i would say lap it up would be good but they're just not quite long enough like mm. as far as the comparison that you're making lap it up works yeah. but seaside sprint for only 21.8 kilometers it's like we need three more laps really you know what i mean or yeah bridges and boardwalks london classic two laps i mean it's they're too flat. It's got to be those little punchy well, climbs. Well, Seaside Sprint has the Essies in there, and you have the climb okay. yeah. the volcano. I've attacked pretty hard. We've done a Kiss 100 on that, actually, for like 15 laps, okay. I think it was, or something. And you had a lot of opportunity to – and plus, when you come out of the Essies on Seaside Sprint, it's an old Rebel route, actually. And um, you take that speed out of the Essies through this, the, the bridge sprint – and then out of that bridge sprint, you can come over the top into the dirt. And there's like a little bump after the sprint, actually, before you hit the dirt section by the Italian village mm -hmm. that allows you to kind of extend yourself away from the rest of the pack pretty quickly because they're slowing down from the sprint at that exact yeah. same time. So it's it's an interesting one. Okay. Actually. But it's only three laps. That's my point is like if you... It, you almost, it's almost like you have to take it on like a tiny race breakaway with how 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 short that race is going to be. You'd have to be fairly. All, I mean, it's it's wacky watts if you want to actually. Yeah. Try and get that so break I think. Going. Yeah, like even the. Um, I'm just looking at some courses here. The um, what was the one? It was in ZRL season, and you went up this first part of the epic, but then you took the left and then started going on the bypass route. Um, so you didn't go all the way up the epic. That was amazing too because it yeah, was ocean side, uh, ocean side, or yeah, ocean cliff side, yeah, ocean lava cliff side loop, maybe. Um, again, those I just think like it's so funny. I used to be so into points races, and I think now I am just so into scratch races because the motivations are there to get away and to do fun stuff. Whereas I think points, you're always just sort of playing it safe a little bit because you're like, well, I may as well just get FTS. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot more safe playing and 
getting away is pretty difficult in those situations a lot of times. I don't know. I, I have to agree with you there that uh, scratch racing is coming back alive in a lot of ways, I think, yeah. on Zwift. So and I, I like that. I like that a lot personally, too. There's a lot more motivations in it. Um, so uh, another thing on relationship to the classics, I think that um, – well, we'll just move on. We'll move on from that. So, okay. <laughs> La, so this thing that you picked up on, on the kids accounts, um, this is an interesting one. And I don't know if it's an actual goodbye to kids free accounts or not, or what's happening there. But you noticed that on the forums, there was a post that said that there's no new kids accounts being signed up. What's this all about? Yeah, so I saw it on um, shout out to the PC Master Race Facebook page um, where I saw it screenshotted. So it was kind of weird because it it was a person saying that they'd wanted to create a kid's account for my 12 year old son. So like I use these for my kids um, and quite a few of the kids who are part of our smart um, hubs around New Zealand are under 16. So they'll use these accounts as well. But they went to like set it up and there was like, a, we hit a snag. So I'm not sure what that means, but like had a problem, I'm guessing. Um, and then Zwift came through and said, at this time, we're no longer accepting consent form requests for under 16 child accounts. We appreciate this news will be disappointing, but we hope your child can find alternate ways to continue pursuing the joys of riding a bike. Um, and then there's just kind of a ton of comments being like, this is disappointing. Well, this is sad. It just seems like a really odd place to kind of announce that. Um, but then someone later on from the forum said that they'd gone on and just emailed support at Zwift.com and had a renewal of the under 16 account. So I'm not quite sure where it's at, but I think from what I saw in a lot of comments, um, and I'm not in a position to know this, is that there's a lot of legalities, particularly in the United States, around under 16s in game and there was actually a few comments that i saw around like isn't this the perfect time to just restrict chat you know like what indie velo did a few weeks ago which was like you can have chat where you see everything or you can have chat where you see this and maybe you could just re restrict the kids account so that they see no chat unless it's Actually, from you can't you can't so i don't know you can't message kids accounts and you can't follow them and you can't like, there's a lot of restrictions already around kids accounts. Mm. I'm like, cause I tried interacting with my kids and I couldn't. So when mm. we were riding on Zwift, there was like a limitation unless you like follow back right. or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a lot of legality. I think that's really what it comes down to and safety concerns and all kinds of stuff that comes up in that, uh, arena. Um, at the same time, like, the ever optimistic and positive thinking Nathan is like, and also like huge advocate for junior cycling, put a lot of work into that space. Um, and with, let's say my 16 year old is like training specifically for the Nike series and the Wisconsin offered series. And I have her, I mean, we have a kid set up here just ready to go with that's a pretty big investment. And then all of a sudden that's just turned off. Like I would be, and how many are there out there that are like that, that like the, the parents don't actually, I mean, they're not probably not going to have that many, but I mean, regardless, like there's some out there, like the parents aren't really into this, their kids into mountain biking or into cycling in some sort of way. They got them as with set up that cost thousands of dollars or at least a few hundred to a thousand dollars. There's a whole space for it. And now the program that's the program, you just can't even use it. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty. And so I think the reason why though, is um, that we're seeing that maybe this is a guess. I don't have any other information at this point, but is that, the renewal is like, well, these are the people who have already invested. We're not going to just take that away from them right now, but we're not signing up mm. any new ones because it's difficult for us to handle with maybe new laws or something. And there's a grandfathering. I don't know. I'm wondering yeah. like, what that's about because it looks, it looks yeah, what, and, and there's no official announcement. There's no nothing other than we're not signing up new accounts, but it seems from the forum post that already current accounts got renewals. 
Yeah, and I think there is a second comment there from Zwift that says the program is being reviewed. There's no current changes to existing accounts and any future changes that impact existing members will be communicated in advance. <clears throat> so I guess watch the space. Um, a little bit mm. disappointing, especially I see a comment here. It's like sad. I just set up my kid's bike on an old trainer so my girls could imitate their mum. I was like, oh, that's like epic. <laughs> Like, that's so cool. Um, I mean, what's going to happen uh, really for those that really want to use the program, you know, they'll just pay for the, and, and yeah. they'll pay for it. And then they'll, they'll say they're a different age. I mean, that's, that's what will end up happening. Yeah. Because if it's the only problem that you can't yeah. set up when you're younger it, is that you'll, yeah. So it'll, it'll with be a situation where there'll be a lot of, Fake emails attached to not real, you know, ages that yeah. are, you know what I mean? Cause that, cause if people want to ride, they're going to do it. But like, what I don't get is that kids game, right? Like my kids play Minecraft. Like there's, what's the, I, I guess like, what's the, the issue? Like Zwift is just a game. So what's the, what can they not put in place that a gazillion other That's games? That's a really good question. Can. I would actually want to know, like. Okay, if it's really that big of a deal, tell us. Just tell, to, yeah. you know, let us let us all know what the problem is, and then we'll probably be way more okay with whatever it is yeah. that seems to be such a big problem. You know? Yeah. So I don't know, but it seems strange. So I was like, oh, I'd rather my kids play Zwift than like play. I don't know. What is Minecraft? it again? Fortnite. You're playing Minecraft well, with them. I mean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but like when they get a bit older, like, I don't know, Fortnite or something, you know, like I'd probably rather they be on a bike. Yeah. I mean, with the amount of Roblox and Minecraft or Apex the kids are playing, man, I could have like world-class athletes for sure. We need to definitely get that Swift <laughs> set up used a little bit more. <laughs> Definitely. So, well, that's just, we just picked that up on the forums and just wanted to give attention to that. Maybe if, you know, if people are wondering what's going on, head on over to the forums and look for a little bit of a feedback. Cause we'd, we'd also like to know, um, the string train spring training program, uh, got announced. I actually saw some reviews of this. Uh, I oh, think yeah. it was Jesse Coyle did a, uh, review of it, of the, and gave it like a thumbs up or a thumbs down on what he thought of each one of the, um, each one of the workouts, the sweet spot foundation, endurance escalator, cadence and cruise power surge, endurance ascent and the sweet spot summit. I took a look at these today actually. Cause I was like, Oh, I got to do some base training. And then I like, and, and I just put in a couple hours of just zone two. And I looked, I was like, that's not zone two. I was like, this is not what I need to do right now. Not happening. This is not a zone two day. So they are definitely sweet spot and above type efforts it looks like to me they're very much like get the best you because sweet spot is the best use of your time without racing in a, in a lot of in a lot of ways without without asking you to do of your running for your life threshold or anaerobic type effort yeah and i think um this one's quite interesting too because i think zwift so they've got a printout so you can print out the spring's training schedule it's like a pdf what do and you think obviously of that what do you think so, of the printout? I mean, like, I like that they're trying to capture the people who are going outside and being like, we know you're going outside, but stay with us, please stay with us. Um, so trying to do something there. I, um, I mean, I wouldn't, I'll do, I might do the workouts. I'm part of that gravel grinder plan at the moment. So that's like five rides a week. So I don't think I'll be, I actually don't think I'll have time. Um, I don't know. I'd be interested in who does this because who if you are prints it out, like, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, and follows it because, like, if you're riding outdoors and you're wanting to do workouts on Zwift, that tells me that you're semi serious into cycling. Like, you've probably got a goal somewhere, which I just don't think this is specific enough. It's kind of like do a workout and then do something outdoors and then, but just I like how much sheet, distance you I do, think how much the time is like. For your fridge. Yeah. I think that might be what it is. Like you put it on your fridge and you check off that you've like done it or, and stuff. Like it's a check. Like it's like a, 
Does that make sense? Now, I think the I think yeah. that as someone who's coaching athletes, my knowledge of like what they're looking for is like, do you have? Can it go on my Garmin? You know what I mean? Like, like could you put it onto another device that you could then you know? And but then there's all these questions like, can ZWO files? Because like. I can't put a ZWO file into an uploadable way onto training peaks that I know of. Like you can put it there kind of, but it's not like it like they're, it's not compatible across. Does that make sense? Like where you can just easily get your ZWO files into your outdoor riding. But I think you, I think you're onto something though. Like, is there a place where, and I do think that this is about connecting to those who are starting to head outside and like, is Zwift trying to kind of like evolve into a platform that is, you're always online Zwift. You know what I mean? You're always kind of tracking your workouts with yeah. Zwift and it isn't just your virtual rides. Yeah. Um, similar to how you can kind of do your Festa 500 on the road or on Zwift, right? Like you can kind of like gather both. But the thing I find really like, and I don't want to bag it too much because I personally really like the kit unlock, which is kind of the only reason I'd do this is that it's a really, really cool kit. We'll feature it in the next show. But it says up the front, like, this spring training is a six-week workout series to help you build endurance for these long outdoor rides. Whether your goal is to lead the pack, train for an upcoming event, or just not get dropped, this will gear you up for the outdoors. There's only one workout a week. And the workouts are like the long version of the workout is like 45 minutes ish. Like, unless I'm missing something, like you're not going to get a whole lot of endurance here in 45 minutes a week. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't understand. Like, it's really like, I can see like my dad doing this. There could be a suggestion that like you do some zone two on either side of this and then do this in the middle. That would be a really good, right? Like half hour, mm. do this half hour or like hour, then do this or something. That, that would be, but that, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like if you don't do as far as like, well, what is considered endurance too? Like what, how are these terms? And I would like to know how these terms are fitting within their data sets too. Like, cause we might have like our brains hold on to different data sets maybe than their, I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt here that there's a user type that they're going after that they know things about that we ne necessarily are like thinking I'm trying to train an athlete for a two to three hour event or even a 60 minute event and I'm trying to give them an endurance workout, I'm thinking double time minimum of what their event is minimum. Right. And so yeah. even at one hour event times trying to build endurance now and there, but, but maybe the Zwift they're like, guys, people just don't ride that long. No matter what we do, we can't get them to ride that long. So this is, this is how we're going to give them endurance is they're going to keep them in a zone three SST slash high zone two zone three space with a little threshold thrown in. Cause that's kind of what Zwift endurance looks like. Like that's what the user yeah, base, okay. like it's a Zwift endurance. It's the user base endurance versus like our more technical coaching. No, cause it says we're helping you to build endurance for those long outdoor rides. It's not okay. saying for those well, long Zwift. I mean, if rides. I'm honest, these are, these are, these are going to build what these are really going to build is your ability to sit in the pack uh, when they're hammering on the front. Every single one of these are going to do that. Like it's sweet spot. It's a little bit of threshold mixed in with sweet spot. It's threshold mixed in with speed spot. It's straight sweet spot threshold. They're like short. It's, oh, that's short. No, they're, yeah, yeah, like they're 40... short. They're short. So that's why I'm saying they're chain gang hold on rides or drill it rides. Yeah. Really? Is what they really so are. what's kind of what I really feel like Zwift is missing at the moment. Maybe that's just this is might be my like confirmation bias and making myself feel better. But I've been like really loving the Zwift training plans. Like I'm doing the gravel grinder one at the moment. I log on, I'm like, I've got my workouts listed. Like, which workout do you want to do today? I'm like, great, I've got five workouts a week. If I do like a TTT or something, I'll just tick off the most similar thing to that TTT and go, I did it so that I don't, you know, end up doing 10 rides a week. But it's so like user-friendly and simple. 
Like I get on, there's the workout I do. The workouts are about an hour to an hour and a half. I do five rides a week. And that's like a, a experienced version of it, I think. So I think like, honestly, they could have turned the spring training into a training plan that they go, hey, we've got, and maybe they're gonna do that, I don't know, but that would be so awesome. Cause one, it's not spring where I am. So it's completely irrelevant. Um, <laughs> but later when it does come into like spring, I'm like, oh, there's that training plan. It's three rides a week. They're about an hour each ride. I can sign on and go and do it and do it like in my own time. I just, I feel a bit disappointed cause it's kind of like we've gone from the big spin to this next thing, which I'm like a 45 minute workout a week. Like it's, it's really like just, I don't know. I think they could really lean into their training plans a bit more. Yeah. You know, that is a space that I would have to agree with you that is struggling right now um, to have the, what seems to be, how do I like, Hmm. the knowledge base of what it takes to coach athletes. Like, I just, I'm not sure that that's there with what I'm seeing from these and that it's, and I'm not sure, but, but th th look, there's a comment coming through right now, live in mm -hmm. chat and Zwift will never grab the, well, the endurance crowd. And he's talking like the, the actual endurance crowd, like endurance competition. That's a whole nother level gab coos from chat actually like i'm backing off like even two steps back three steps back from that that even someone who's trying to build endurance for the outdoor group ride um you know that does that the hour like you just said hour and a half to two hours there's a lot of workouts that are on zwift that are legacy workouts they're a little bit older that seemed to have come to it from, from a time when there wasn't as much of this focus on what will Zwifters do? You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. Mm. And how do we capture them in order to get repeatable repeatability into this? And so maybe there is a, a like a, a naming misnomer there and like what the goals are around it that might not necessarily fit with what we understand those goals to be. If we're training athletes, like, um, and that might be the other thing is like, maybe they're trying to aim this at people who are not necessarily as super serial about cycling as we are, you know? Like yeah. But I think then it's kind of, it's almost trying to do everything for all people. Cause I, like I was saying, like, I think my parents would be great customers of spring training, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. a 45 minute workout once a week. Like, yeah, they would totally do that. But because it said like, help you build endurance for long outdoor rides train for an upcoming event, lead the pack. Don't get, or just don't get dropped. This yeah. If will you, gear you, you up can the do outdoors. just this, that's not happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So you can yeah. be sold something that you're like, and then you show up and you're like, and the, you know, I'm totally unprepared that then. So that's probably what's in the yeah. back of your head is like, this isn't going to prepare someone for what this was isn't, said there. So it's not, it's not going to prepare people for what they said. And then the people who probably would do it, cause it's quite well achievable probably aren't going out and riding endurance events outdoors anyway. They're just like, I just want to keep fit. So yeah. I feel like it's kind of a program that has just kind of missed the mark a little. It's tried to satisfy both. And I think we'll end up satisfying neither. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm. But the kit's cool. I'll give it that. Now I will say that I would kind of throw these together. Like, you know, into if I wanted to do some sweet spot work, like, I would definitely throw this in the middle of a workout, right? Like, no, but you have to have the knowledge to do that, right? You have to like have the know-how that like, Hey, sweet spot foundation seems like a really good workout. And I'm, I might be like to an athlete who I'm trying to build up their zone three or their, you know, a little bit and get them slightly into their threshold training. I would give them some base, some, some zone two up front and then be like, go do one of these. Cause it's a nice little way to, to cap off the workout or something like that, but it's an add on. And so, yes, the, the comms there are definitely, I, I'd have to agree with you on that. I would, the workouts in and of themselves are not bad workouts though. In and of not, themselves, no, the stand workouts, alone, they're great workouts actually just stand alone for their, what they get done in the timeframes. 
Yeah, and I guess it'll get added to the workout library, which sometimes I use. I'm like, oh, I've got 45 minutes today, and you do that search, right? Search for 45 minutes, easy, and likely the cadence and cruise will pop up. So I think it's great that they'll be added to the library. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I, I'm kind of just surprised it's a whole like workout series event thing. Um, mm, yeah, true. but interesting. I'll, true. I'll be really interested to see what the numbers are like for it. Women's Racing Series number four has been announced. After a long hiatus, the Zwift Women's Racing Series returning in the next round of eight races has just been announced. We actually saw this last year. Gabby did like a ton of these actually and got really mm. involved in it. She absolutely loved it. Um, they're short though, it looks like. Interesting. <laughs> and, they're hard. But yeah, tell me about this. Tell me what you're thinking. Okay, I'm pretty excited for this, to be honest. We've got Team Riot's going to show up because um, why the hell not? And my surgery oh, is being... Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like not short. I just was looking at the time trial. My yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. They're not short. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, and I think my surgery is going to be like delayed. So I think I might be able to do the whole series, which would be great. Um, yeah, it's eight weeks. There's uh, three different time slots. So, uh, or four different time slots. 8.30 a.m. that's kind of 8 30 a.m. UTC 4 30 a.m. EDT 1 30 a.m. PDT oh I shouldn't read them all out like that I'll go UTC 8 30 a.m. UTC 5 30 p.m. UTC 10 30 p.m. UTC and 1 30 a.m. UTC so lots of different time zones to work with I've entered two time zones because I'm like oh I could do a race in the morning and then jump on and try it again um it's eight weeks and then it's a really cool format. There's a whole lot of different structures here. So it starts off with a time trial, which is on Tempest Fugit. Then it's week two is a scratch race on that Ocean Lava Cliffside Loop, which is awesome. Then it goes into a scratch race on Watopia Jurassic Coast, which is cool, like new courses we had. Then it's like the really hard one, which I'm like, oh, this would be brutal. The scratch race on Watopia's Mountain Mash. Remember in Zwift Games, that um, climb one, and then the B's, the C's and D's did that. So basically just like 6K straight up epic. Um, week five is sprinters, and that's now going into like points. Then how to, will, uh, Watopia Hilly points, Scotland's Muckle Young points, and then it finishes off with a time trial on good old Bologna. So yeah, it's good. And it's a serious competition. So your best result each week earns you a certain number of points and your best six weekly results will be used. So you could basically drop two races for your overall ranking. Um, so you can now, miss two weeks or have an six, off week. And you can do any though throughout the day it's not like they're it's not like tiny races where they're gonna match up like the early and then the midday and the late day it's just your best six across all of the opportunities to do the stage yeah. okay got it which is handy because i was kind of like oh well just you could just do one of the races where there's not many people but <laughs> it's not on your finishing position it's on the fastest course time which has its own issues because when you do it on either way, there'll be an issue. Cause if you do it on finishing position, you just go for a smaller field and you'll have a better finishing well, it looks position. Like it changes, but though. if you wait, it looks like it changes per thing. Yeah. So the points one, yeah, I'll go through first. Though. So fastest okay. course time though. Oh, actually, no, sorry. You're right. Yes. Fastest course is only for the time trials, the time trial. And then it's, and then it's finishing position. Finishing position until you hit the points races. Then there's fastest segment times plus finishing position decides winner. Yes, that would be it. So it, start, um, it starts getting a little bit more complicated for those points races. Yeah, this is, um, and it's going to be interesting. So then I'm, it decides I might through the a roles. winner yeah. and then like, like in when you do a WTRL ZRL points race, you add it all up at the end and then there's a, a point structure yeah, yeah. that's decided at the end of it. So, and it's going to be a points competition overall. So it's going to get later on, you're going to start looking at some tactics, I think playing out if people start getting really serious and also maybe some sniping of when there's more or less riders involved in some of the races. So, yeah. And I just wonder if they're going to do overall series rankings per time zone or overall series rankings over all time zones. 
you'd almost hope by time zone because then they would take away the issue of smaller fields yeah. um, in certain races. But anyway, I think the series is going to be awesome. Eight races, that's going to keep some women zwifting away um, all up until the last kind of week of June. So it's a good two months of racing there. So yeah, it's so great. April 30th, it starts week one. So uh, through May 4th and we got May 7th. Uh, oh no, is it through or is it those just two days? Is that, I'm sorry if I'm in, reading this incorrectly. So race happens I think it's Tuesdays, supposed to be Tuesday, April 30 to May 4. I'm not quite sure what those two so, dates in there mean, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's just the first one starts April 30, next one, May 7, next one, May 14. So yeah, it's every week, right? Gotcha. Maybe we're going to have to throw this on the schedule. I mean, it's just announced, but, uh, you know, we love to cover the women's racing. So maybe we hype it up a little bit, get some coverage. We'll see what we can do about that um, leading into this. So really cool. I'm, I'm liking the courses. That mountain mash. I've been excited about that course specifically because it's that right in between. It's like. I don't know. I think that that course would also be a good course for like an epic race where like you're trying to find the climbers and you add that mountain mash and the volcano KOM, but then there's also like some long, you know, finishing straights or something that leave it open for some sprinters to get involved that they can hang on over the top or something, you know? It's, know. um, like, how do you, Oh gosh, it's just, like, I look at it. So you basically, yeah, you come out of the start pins over by the jungle, the jungle and you go left. It's the only then, one that goes left right away. Yeah, yeah. And then go up. Straight up watch <laughs> up your <mouth. laughs> like But it's not, and it's it's not the, the full climb. You cut off that really steep initial start. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually a shorter climb than the usual Watopia Mountain reverse. I know, but only 6K. So I feel like you've got no lead in to kind of just warm no, into it. No, You're just like, you boom, up. Up. It's mountain bike race. <laughs> mountain bike, cycle cross, oh. go. Bam. Go, go yeah. your warm up first. You're off. Come on. <laughs> oh my god i'm not good at warming up but yeah it's um yeah it'll be fun and yeah i just like the number of new courses because it's quite fun racing on a new course because you people don't really know what they're doing so you get to have a bit more fun all right let's jump on over to this whole thing about uh the super tri e world triathlon championship powered by zwift i'm not surprised to do this again those streams get a good amount of viewership and they do a really good job of taking the in real life pros. And I got to say what's going on in triathlon. And I got to ask you like the personalities in triathlon feel more like TV and movie stars than the personalities <laughs> in, um, and I, you know what? This isn't a slight. Okay. Don't take this as a slight. Okay. okay. There's much more of a general population participation thing going on in triathlon than there is in road cycling right like it's way yeah. do your triathlon like everybody's like have you done a triathlon i'm gonna try doing an ironman oh, i'm gonna do a half or i'm gonna try a sprint and see how it goes and i know a lot more general fit people who are like i'm gonna try a triathlon and they feel like there's more accessibility whereas road cycling does not do a very good job of being very inviting and has this total like you don't know you don't know us. You know what I mean? They have this like, uh, like elbows yeah. out. You're not, there is a cycling mafia, like an entry point in, in, you know what I mean? Whereas triathlon is way more. And also it's a solo thing where you don't have to learn to ride in a pack. Like you can just, like, yeah. you know, there's, this, there isn't as much of a learning curve in that respect. You're not even close to as much of a learning curve. Sorry, but like, um, and so I feel like you get more of this, you do have super stardom in cycling that has almost like idol worship, honestly, in yeah. some ways. But in triathlon, I feel like there's more, it, it feels, the ethos of it, the feeling of it feels more like a Hollywood star rather than I, the, pro cycling, the pro cycling idol worship thing that happens. Does that make sense what I'm I've saying? Got a, yeah, absolutely. And I've got okay. an idea about this. And I said I <laughs> pretty sure I wasn't going to get into like the um, World Federation 
sides of things, but I think in this, it, it makes sense. So I was talking about my husband with it. I was like, yeah, it is kind of interesting in triathlon. There's like not this traditional feel or there's a real, like this E try, like I'm not surprised so many people tune in and watch and everyone's just like, cool, something new. This is amazing. Like embrace it. And wow. And the huge athletes come and do it. So we look at, um, the like, uh, UCI eSport World Championships that we've had, like there might be a couple, like definitely Lois Adegis, um, and maybe a couple, but you wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, there's Lotta Kapeki. Oh my gosh, there's Mitchu Vanderpool and Walt Van Aert. Like, whereas the e-triathlon has literally got gold medalists from the Olympics, has got world ranked numbers one to 20 racing. Like it is so, um, it's the elite, of the elite triathletes on there right and i think part of this is like world triathlon was founded in 1989 and if you compare that to world rowing was 1892 uci was 1900 fifa was 1904 and even canoe racing was 1946 like it is such a like relatively speaking new sport and i think it kind of has taken that newness all the way through its um ethos and it's all about kind of innovation and getting people involved and it doesn't have that sort of um like it doesn't have the tradition which is quite cool of other federations but it's also got the yeah the the smiles and the come on in like this is amazing and give it a try so that's probably maybe yeah, where you get like a bit of that vibe in the modern era like <laughs> as a new thing too like there's that there's that yeah. side of it right and like get as many people involved as we possibly can without any of this like old guard rules of what the sport is kind of holding things back a little bit that's a good take maybe in some ways um they did so just what I schedule think it. it. They did just schedule the stream. If you do want to watch it, April 13th, they're going live in two days, 12.30 p.m. my time on April 13th. That's central, uh, it looks like. so. Um, and I was actually just looking at the past streams uh, just a moment ago. And the past streams, the live finals, if you go to their uh, thing here, if you go to this, I mean, 191K, 183K. Mm. 168k i mean good branding on it too i'm gonna hold ahead and click through here and they they do this in an arena like an actual arena and then swim they do the swim and then they run over to their treadmills and run it out here then they jump on the bikes and they're on zwift they're also on zwift on the road look at that too, production the production look at that really production good. by the but way it's all like in one arena though it's in one arena so that does make but if Oh, but the numbers, just even the numbers on the screen, like when they've got the people on that, on the bike course, it's like what we've just started to see on Zwift games, like the real cameras on. And I know they're actually sitting there, but yeah, I thought it, the production quality is really high. It's really good. Um, it is actually really good. It is. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm there's also of... like the arena sense to it. Like there is a little bit of a Coliseum thing going on here, right? <laughs> there's a little bit of like yeah. you're watching three different things happen and it's kind of wild. You know what I mean? They're jumping in a pool, then they're running over to this thing and they're running their hearts out, and then they're jumping on a bike, and it's like it's it's kind of got that ninja warrior feel a little bit to it, you know? But they're all yeah, against absolutely. each other. Yeah. So yeah. So this so. is interesting. Oh my God. So sorry. I was trying to look something up. So what did you say the views on that were about 200,000? Yeah. A little under 200,000. Yeah. 180,000. The 2023 UCI cycling esport world championship. 100,000 views. Really? On the Zwift channel. Yeah. That's pretty good. At, I'm not, I mean, that's in its first couple but of years. Like, that's pretty good. Honestly, but interesting that a tri why does the triathlon event have more? Quite interesting there. Well, I would not have older. like expected it's older. that. It's older. It has a following. Like there's way mm. more people in the triathlon. That's okay. I you know, that's pretty good. Like I was, I'm a little okay. like whoa. Okay, that's not bad. Like comparative. If you're gonna do the comparison there, plus production, like you just said and everything, I'm kind of like, whoa. Did somebody like throw that into a 
marketing campaign somewhere because wow really, <laughs> <laughs> like okay. well, it's not like the other one wouldn't be marketed you know what i mean triathlon super try is yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. marketing that stuff so i don't know like i thought you were gonna say ten thousand or two twenty thousand. Oh, okay so like no no, no. i don't know like still it is definitely bigger in that sense but that's to be expected with the demographic and esports is young in a lot of ways and like triathlon and the grabbing on of it and 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 there's it like you said there's more for some reason there's just more crossover happening whereas like even though zwift is very much a household name in a lot of ways and brand within the cycling world right now with coming in and throwing mm -hmm. that support out there into it i don't feel like it's as like because of the general fitness crew being so triathlon oriented, I feel like there's so many triathletes who are just very accepting of like, I have a day job and I need to ride and bah, I'm going to go. Whereas like the pro yeah, yeah. cycling field might not be as like, you're not actually us. You know what I mean? Like, yes, you're kind of a thing that's around here, but I don't know if you're actually us still, you know what I mean? I, I, I get that sense. So the other interesting part about this is they've partnered. So they've always had Garmin as a key partner, but now they're like a real, like significant partner in this. And they're bringing all this technology, which I also think is really interesting. So as soon as, and this is where it gets a bit of the like fight, like style to it. You know how they walk in with like, so they've got to walk in <laughs> and stand. It's WWE, oh. WWF. WWF, there we go. They've got to step on an index S2 smart scale. So some kind of Garmin weighing device, and then that gets transferred to Zwift somehow. Um, and then during the race, they're all going to have these like Pro Plus premium heart rate monitors, and they're going to have data coming through at all times during swimming, biking, and running. Um, and it'll help fans understand the efforts of their heroes to, to for what it takes. I was like, that's quite um, – like triathletes, I've got to say, like, love data like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've noticed that too i noticed that the desire for the data in specifically when watching the because i watched these in the past and like the chat flips out when there's data like just totally is like oh ah! <laughs> yeah like it's crazy and so um yeah that's quite interesting too so pairing with like not a smart trainer company but like a device company hmm Interesting one. Yeah, there we go. We'll but tune in because it's quite... I think they like the the inside look to the athletes, like you were saying, though. I think that's the big one right there is getting yeah. those inside looks. People stock Stravas for that stuff, man. Like, oh, they yeah. They really do. So um, there's a whole, yeah, there's a whole media package specifically around that just when it comes to can you get a hold of the pros data? Uh, data? I, I would wonder, <laughs> data, data, what are we saying here? Yeah, like I'm, I'm I saying, say data. I know I'm saying <laughs> right now. I'm like, but it's like Yay! it's like sitting in the back of my throat, like ready to go. And I'm like, uh, data? Like I'm like, like it doesn't want to go all the way. You know that like hesitation? Uh, that, uh, because you're oh changing the way I speak. Oh man. Okay. Um <laughs> let's go ahead and head into our garage picks though. Uh pretty cool. Watch that. I'll be hanging out in the stream to check it out this weekend as well. But our garage pick slash jersey of the week how did you pronounce this help me out again well le beret <laughs> is the hat and le tonnesol i'm guessing the jersey which means tonnesol. the i probably got that i probably hatcheted at that but it means the sunflower now you remember when we looked um at the big spin at the very beginning at to what these unlocks were for each world and i was like this is the worst it looks so bad but um i have actually been wearing it just because it like it does look really bad but it's almost iconic because of how it looks like pairing the like monet style sunflowers with a beret it i think it looks kind of cool actually so i I'll might give change you the jersey. my rating the beret is just too that's just too red for me. I don't know. There's something about the way it looks and like, I don't even feel like it's fully written. I don't know why, but it looks like the curves on it are weird too. So like, I don't know that beret for me is just like a no go, like big no go. But I do like the Jersey and the Jersey is the only one of its kind when it comes to those specific colors in Zwift that I know of that you could match with something that's kind of yellowish green like that. There isn't anything else in game that I know of that hits that color scheme that you could match to other things in game actually. So I think 
It's a good one for matching other accessories that you want to match with that color scheme specifically. I got to give you the Monet, Monet thing there too. And just, yeah, it's got that. If you, wanted, if you want the France feel and you're riding around in France specifically it, with all those sunflowers, it's a, good, it's a good match. So what are you giving it on a scale one to 10? Oh, it's a really hard scale here. So I've got to kind of go like... I still think it looks terrible and I would wear it on our bad Jersey podcast ride, but it's so terrible. It's iconic. I get it. So get then it. I've got a, yeah, you get what I'm meaning. eh? so like, it looks like about a two out of 10 for me, <laughs> but because of that, I'll give it like a nine out of 10 for icon. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. just going to give it a straight 5.5. It's middle of the road, like a <laughs> little better than middle of the road. The beret is like a point. F- I don't know. See now, wait, you've just done that to me with the beret where it's so bad that it's good now. Like, but I, I can't even put it on. It's like, no, no, it's, oh, it's bad. It's ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't even want to use that language, but I can't handle the beret. I really can't. Now, I like the New York cap. I like, you know, the headphones. They're all really great. That beret is just, rah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. So my go. teammates, I'm wearing the headphones and my teammates while we were racing yesterday were like, those headphones just make me think you don't want to listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's so true. Like if you're like riding around with headphones on, you're like, you just don't actually, talk to me. totally. It does actually make you feel like the person who's got them on is like, leave me alone. I'm listening to music. Yeah. I right. Like so, um, oh, quick, I mention, like it. quick cool. mention on, on style and in game gear. First spotting of the gold Tron, Neil Freyat racing in the Americas uh, broadcast, we actually uh, saw that. It was pretty cool to see, actually. First time that I caught it, actually, in one of our broadcasts with the Golden Tron. Oh, my gosh. Yes, the Golden yeah, Tron. Golden I Tron. totally Neil forgot Freyat. to mention that. Yeah, so he yeah, grabbed I was the Golden watching. Tron in race number two. Yeah. Now, that, when you zoomed in on that, it just looked magnificent. Like, so good. Yeah, it like, did. It was... Really, really good. And this is where these little things, when it comes to oh. gaining those kind of artifacts in game, you know, oh. yeah, so good. The badge idea. The the there is a status thing to play on there for sure. Like absolutely, especially when it's that hard to get. You know, like because if there were three different winners in Zwift games, there would be three. Six. You know, only six. six Trons out there. Six. Yeah. And There's in the women's that, race, because Catherine Fur like owns like all of them one, except for Illy yeah. Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? And so that's like, yeah, it is. Yeah, when you win in on it, and it's also that kind of thing that I felt really great watching it. That I was like, I I know that, but just the regular watcher may not know that. Yeah, you know, totally. like I'm invested. Yeah, it was cool. I agree. Yeah, Kevin Osborne's coming in with some chat saying that he likes the beret and it's replaced the bucket hat. So it looks like we are on very opposite um fashion calls myself and kevin kevin's always awesome to see him hanging out actually he's been doing the z racing he actually did that uh glasgow i believe uh race and monday he shows up for a lot of them so great to see you in chat kevin well that's gonna be it for us what are you up to for the next week hannah i'm excited tomorrow i've got two brand new ttters who have joined riot who do not race who are now gonna try racing um come and do the ttt tomorrow um one of them's the someone i gravel ride with um and the other is an athlete i coach and so we're gonna do it's two laps of something um but we're gonna do one lap of just kind of taking everyone through the ropes of what a TTT is and then do the second lap, adding a bit of power. But yeah, it's going to be fun introducing some new people to something that I really like doing. And it's motivating me to get up at five o'clock in the morning on a Friday. Oh so, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. But we're like different ends of the spectrum. I cannot believe you're up at midnight. Yeah, we are. But yeah, five a- yeah. I'm a night yeah, owl. 5 a.m. is all you're right morning, for me. You're, you're an early bird. <laughs> you like the mornings. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool. The introduction. I want to know how that goes. I'm going to definitely ask about that next week well, to see like what the impression is of TTT and yeah, virtually um, doing that. Cause I remember exactly, you talking about like, getting your buddies into this and going and doing this. Yeah. You had talked about this invitation happening and now it's happening. And like, yeah. 
Seahawks. The TTT is its own thing, like its own tactical. Mm. We talk about it so often, and like how quickly they're like, "Oh, yeah, I got this," or "Wait, I'm all over the map." You know what I mean? Like how that's gonna. Yeah. Play out. So we'll see how it goes. And I'll be, um, I didn't touch on this earlier, but I'm trialing the Wahoo kicker bike shift. And so I'll be using that tomorrow. I used it in ZRL yesterday and I'm going to use it tomorrow in the TTT, see how it goes, try a workout over the weekend. But I have to say I'm not sold on it. Well, let's, so. let's give it another week and see. We'll do a <laughs> yeah. full, we'll do a full dive into the, what you think about the bike. that will be an interesting one next week it's quiet i'll give it that it's unbelievably quiet all right well, but i'll talk about we'll do yeah, a segment that's a good next little week teaser that's a good little teaser for next week's segment on anna's tests of the kicker shift bike be cool to hear definitely uh what am i up to i'm going to be doing a lot of base training we're getting outside finally it's getting warm here so i think sunday maybe a big outdoor ride with the gabs uh besides that i'll probably find some sort of a race to do on saturday on zwift and i'm just doing a lot of these uh gg zone two we call them they're gabby's zone two rides that she rides up a lot of times so i've been doing a lot of that and just uh making sure and then we're lifting like crazy um, so I think we're hitting up the gym tomorrow. So that's about it for us. If you didn't know, and you're just tuning in, we've been live on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and X And this podcast. This is a podcast you can download as well. The audio version will be available sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours on ZwiftCommunityLive.com slash podcast, or search up anywhere you download your podcast, The Wrap and Zwift for Man and I. This has been episode number 90. We'll see you next week for episode 91. As always, from the both of us, right on.